I say all the time on this show that politics and sports do not mix. If you need any further proof of that point, just look at what politics is doing right now to college football. I don't know if any of you noticed this. Maybe I'm the only one that's noticed. But have you guys noticed that the conferences that are located in the more democratic or liberal regions of the country are against college football playing this fall and the conferences that are in the more conservative parts of the country are okay with college football starting a schedule maybe delayed a week or two but for the most part going full steam ahead have any of you guys noticed that college football is potentially changing forever right in front of our eyes I'm going to tell you why in just a few minutes and I'm going to give you a silver lining to everything that is happening right now also I'm gonna give you a possible scenario where college football as we know it today could cease to exist in the future you can't deny the effect that this coronavirus pandemic is having on college football the second most popular sport in this country College football this season is going to be a lot different than what we're used to, if it happens at all. But different doesn't always mean it has to be a bad thing. I actually think that this has the chance to change college football for the better. I'll get to that in just a second. Things are changing quickly right now. But as of the time that I am recording this on Tuesday night, here is where we stand with the Power Five conferences in college football. The Big Ten, they are planning or they are going to cancel their season and they want to play it in the spring. Pac-12, talking about doing the same thing. The SEC and the ACC, they're planning to play, though their season is going to be delayed until the middle or late September. The Big 12, well, as of right now, when I'm recording this, the Big 12 is up in the air. No decision has been made on what they're going to do. In all of this, I really feel bad for the players. A majority of the players want to play. Trevor Lawrence, quarterback at Clemson, arguably the biggest star this coming up season in college football. He is leading a movement of players who want to play the 2020 season. And let's quit pretending that these conferences are canceling or postponing their seasons because they're worried about player safety. That is a lie. The NCAA has never worried about the players before. They are canceling the season or postponing the season because they are afraid of lawsuits. They're afraid of the liability. So let's quit pretending like these people in power in college football give a damn about these players. They care about not getting sued. They care about not losing any more money than they're already going to lose. Some of the leagues, like I said a second ago, they are going to postpone their season until the spring of 2021. And let me tell you right now, that is not going to work. That is going to be an unmitigated disaster. The problem with spring football when it comes to the college level, you're pretty much eliminating your junior and senior players. Why would a junior that is a potential NFL prospect agree to play football in February and March? Why would he willingly miss the draft combine, miss interviewing with potential teams that are going to pay him to play football? Why would he miss all that to go out and play college football for free? The answer is he wouldn't. If that is the case, college football would potentially be unwatchable. Who wants to watch a bunch of kids who have no shot at the NFL go out there and play football against each other? A lot of college football is already unwatchable when things are normal. When I started this channel last August, it was right before college football season started up. In my first video, or one of my first videos, the podcast was audio only at the time, so it wasn't really a video, but anyway... My first episode was geared around the problems in college football. Too many cupcake games, not enough teams that play competitive schedules. I called out Alabama specifically in that podcast 
Nick Saban didn't have enough competitive games scheduled last season until they played LSU in early November. Alabama had two tough opponents all of last season. LSU, Auburn, and they lost both games. I think there's a silver lining in everything that's going on right now with college football. These conferences canceling, postponing their seasons, whatever you want to call it. This could actually change college football for the better, at least for this year. Most head coaches are completely against canceling or postponing the season. Jim Harbaugh at Michigan, he has been vocal about his team playing. Scott Frost at Nebraska, he's actually come out and said that Nebraska's playing this fall. He didn't care if they had to go outside of the Big Ten to do it, play in another conference. His team is playing this fall. I have said since last year that they need to dissolve these conferences in college football. Set up schedules in a way that your top programs are playing each other during the regular season. What would you guys rather see? Alabama playing 10, 11, 12 games a year against the Citadel, Vanderbilt, Kentucky, Louisiana Monroe? Or a schedule that had teams like Georgia, Auburn, Nebraska, Notre Dame, Clemson, Michigan, Florida, Florida State. Here's what I'm hoping is going to happen for the 2020 college football season. You have the SEC and the ACC that have come out and so far said that they are willing to play. So you group the teams together all across the country that want to play. Put them in those two conferences. They could be like the NFC and the AFC are in the NFL. Separate them into divisions, maybe. Build a regular season schedule based on your division, your conference. Have the top four, top six teams in each conference head into a playoff-style tournament late November, early December. The two teams that make it out of their playoff-style tournament or whatever in the conferences, those are the two teams that play in the national championship. Very simple, I think. And this would do a number of things to benefit college football. One, it would get rid of the senseless bowl games that they subject us to every December. And in my opinion, it would create a much more compelling college football regular season and a playoff season. It can't be that hard to figure this out for the people in college football. Schedules for every program right now are wide open. So find a way to make it happen with the teams that want to participate this season. Now, some of you may be wondering, what would happen to all these smaller programs? Does anyone really care? I mean, first of all, many of these smaller programs, UMass, the MAC Conference, they were some of the first to cancel their season. Most of these programs that are on the, the mid-major, is what we would call them in college basketball, that are on that level, they're not going to survive. I mean, the Pac-12 right now is reportedly preparing to take out billions of dollars in loans to cover the lost money in the 2020 season. We're talking about big money schools having to borrow money. The only way these smaller programs exist in normal times is because they are paid millions of dollars every season to play the Michigans, the Ohio States, the Alabamas. Without that revenue coming in, and now with a lot of their seasons being canceled, I think we're going to see some of these smaller football programs fold, possibly never come back. I'm going to say something right now that is not going to be very popular. A lot of you diehard college football fans and traditionalists, you're not going to like what I'm about to say. The NFL has to have a feeder system for talent. It's not like the NBA, who doesn't have to rely on college basketball. You can draft an 18-year-old kid out of high school if they end up stopping making them be 19 years old. But theoretically, you can draft an 18-year-old kid out of high school and he can step right into the NBA. The NFL does not have that luxury. You can't put an 18, 19-year-old kid on the field against 25, 30-year-old men who are 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds heavier and a whole lot faster looking to take their heads off. You can't do it. Never going to happen. The NFL is already dangerous enough without having to worry about kids dying on the field. So the NFL has to have a feeder system, which for our entire lives has been college football. 
Well, that is being taken away right now. They're not going to postpone their draft in April just because the NCAA can't get their act together. But what happens next year, or 2022? What happens when the next virus comes along and starts spreading around and people go into a panic and want to shut everything down again? Is college football going to cancel or postpone their season again? These are the types of questions that Roger Goodell and the NFL are thinking about right now. If the NFL were to ever develop a minor league system, or if someone else came along and developed an NFL feeder system, college football is dead. It is dead. I'm not talking about the XFL either or anything like that. I'm talking about strictly a football development system, football league, for 18 to 21-year-old kids. Now, you might think I'm crazy. You might think that this will never happen. But it's already being discussed. Before the coronavirus pandemic hit, there was already a player development league that was being formulated out in California. So it is not outside the realm of possibility. If the NCAA can't get their heads together and figure something out, you could be looking at the end of college football as we know it. What would happen is just what happened to college basketball. Your four or five star level players They are going to bypass college football, head straight to whatever the NFL minor league or development system is. What college football will be left with is nothing but scrubs. And no one is going to watch that. I mean, be honest. No one is going to watch that. College football is at a crossroads right now. They don't have much time, the SEC, ACC, whoever the hell is going to participate. They don't have much time to figure out this season. But if they can do this correctly, this could be a great season for college football. Could be one of the more exciting regular seasons that we have seen in college football. The problem with the NCAA is, well, one of the many problems with the NCAA is they don't have any leadership. There is no central authority figure. No one person that makes decisions, controls everything. There's no Roger Goodell, no Adam Silver. No one has the final authority to bring things together and make it happen. If college football doesn't figure something out, or if they find a way to screw this up, which, let's be honest, is likely to happen, college football as we know it could be on the road to never being the same. All right, that's all for today. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for me. Click the notification bell to receive all updates from the channel. Leave me a comment in the section below. Is the NCAA in college football in trouble of never being the same, never being like it was while we were growing up? Let me know your thoughts on my idea of how the college football season should go down this year. Let me know your thoughts. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTL84. If you have any questions, a topic you'd like me to discuss, you can email me at BTLKC84 at gmail.com. I'll see you guys next time.